we waste absolutely no time starting out the night in Green Bay, Wisconsin with none other than Gunther. <laughs> Gunther addresses his comments from last week and says he meant every single word. You're all bums. He wants the title. Tells Priest he's a pretender. Come out, bring me my belt, and hand it to me. And Priest's music hits. He comes down with title in one hand, microphone in the other, and then they just start to brawl. And it goes back and forth like the giant chicken and Peter and Family Guy. And they go in the ring, up the ramp into the back, out into the alley, until Adam Pierce finally breaks it up and says, that's enough. Chicken, Peter, stop fighting. Pierce tells Peter and the giant chicken, your match is coming up in a couple weeks at SummerSlam, the world heavyweight title on the line. You've got to wait until then, boys. Priest is not happy, but he got some revenge. Wait, 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 hey, hang on, hang on. What are we fighting about? I know what you're thinking. ETEP, we're a minute and 20 seconds into the video, and we haven't had it. That doesn't work for me, brother. We haven't had one yet. Well, folks, it's time for our first match. Ilya Dragunov versus Braun Breaker. So get ready. What are we doing? What exactly are we doing here? Is this going to turn into AEW? Are we going to consistently see this? And I know people told me, oh, but ETEP, this is them telling the story. No, no, this is complete asininity. This is ridiculous. I am supposed to suspend my disbelief for this match where Braun Breaker weighs 250, 260 pounds, got literally 20 to 30% of the offense against a 210 pound fucking glorified cruiserweight who for some reason, Triple H and the boys backstage think he belongs in a fucking feud with a guy that would rip him in half like a wet fucking napkin. Give me a fucking break. This is so stupid. I expect this from AEW. I do. But this shit seeping in. This is just as bad as the ridiculous intergender matches. Let's go through this thing and see how many that doesn't work for me, brothers, will have during this fucking match. And if you're stupid enough to sit there and say, tell me you're a Braun Breaker mark without telling me you're a Braun Breaker mark, I'm not. Because this shit happens later on in the night with that little fucking munchkin Pete Dunn. He weighs 205 pounds, and he's supposed to square with Bronson Reed or fucking Sheamus? Come on. Come on. This is ridiculous. What? I don't care if they're mid-card feuds or not. This is still stupid and devaluing fucking guys, which is dumb. This is antithetical to the suspension of disbelief. It's fucking trash. This is indie So let's start out here. Braun in the corner, of course. Big guy's in peril, getting shot, get punched in the face, takes a kick to the face. Braun comes out, couple punches, couple punches, of course. Dragunov hits the ropes, comes back, kicks him in the fucking face again. So Braun back sells it, he falls into the ropes, of course falls out of the ring like he just got killed. And then of course, shithead's in control on the apron because why wouldn't he be? He's outweighed by 50 pounds. He should be in physical control and dominating this entire match, right? <laughs> Pack up! Get up! That ain't gonna work for me, brother! So here comes a spot that should severely limit Dragunov's offense the remainder of the match if this was a guy who wasn't a little scrawny bitch and they had to make him look strong because he's not next to the guy he's working with. So Breaker picks him up, gonna suplex him, drops his ribs across the corner post, and Braun gets about two seconds to celebrate because Homeboy barely sells this the rest of the match except for maybe one spot. That ain't gonna work for me, brother! What in the world of stupidity happens next? Well, of course, Dragunov gets a bunch of punches in on Braun. Gets about three good shots, goes, he's gonna jump, and jumps right to Braun's shoulders. What happens? 
Of course, Braun, military press into a gut buster, into a falsy. All right, there's a falsy. Braun goes for a pin. Then he's like, I'm going to powerbomb this little bitch. I'm going to powerbomb him. Well, of course, not physically strong enough because dipshit reverses it into a fucking modified DDT. And that doesn't work for me, brother. I'm sorry. I got a little bit heated, but let's go. Oh, Jesus Christ. So Braun takes about 20 seconds worth of offense from dipshit and it is completely unbelievable as we see we get a reverse stupid chop hit to the knee another chop kick to the back of the head and bronze like okay i've had enough hits the ropes and gets kicked in the fucking face so then fruit loop goes and does his fruity little spin comes back and completely turns doesn't work for me brother so Braun, the underdog in this match, still selling, still selling, but rest assured, he gets up and is quickly, his efforts are thwarted by the dastardly fucking, oh wait, he's the baby face. So he's getting a bunch of corner offense, takes Braun across the ring, head first into the buckle. Of course, we got to get more chops in because Braun is a weak bitch and you just got to take this offense. So shithead turns around, runs back. And hits Braun in the face with a fucking knee, because why not? Braun, of course, sells, goes down, and dipshit goes across the ring, and then kicks him in the fucking face! Why not? Goes for a power bomb. Oh, oh, my ribs, I can't hit it. Oh, no. Braun's like, no, I'm fucking done. Grabs him by the neck, and is, of course, fucking stopped by more punches to the face, and a... Big fucking shot again, because why not? Bronze a pussy, gets hit in the face, and falls right into position, and the little bitch picks him up, and fucking power bombs him! Why you work for me, brother? Oh yeah, at this point, Bron managed to get a Frankensteiner in too, which, yay, good job. Oh! But let's get real because Braun Breaker is facing Hulk Hogan in this match and he kicks out so Braun's like, all right, Hulk, I'm going to go up top and Hulk Hogan kicks his fucking leg out. And then Braun, of course, gets crotched on the ropes and Hulk Hogan is like, all right, what am I going to do now? I'm going to take this little minuscule pipsqueak up top and I'm going to hit him with a fucking superplex. And then, of course, Hulk Hogan hits him with his finisher, the H-bomb. That doesn't work for me, brother. So Braun Volkov, the evil Russian, rolls to the apron, the only safe place to escape from Hulk Hogan, who says, no, you commie bastard. I am going to easily hoist you up on my shoulders and get ready to eliminate communism. As Hulk Hogan gives him a fucking attitude adjustment on the apron, Braun goes down to his knees. The evil Braun Volkov dies on the mat. Hey, yo, that is not going to work for me. Mercifully, this comes to an end when Hulk Hogan stands up, tries to fight for the rights of every man, but the evil, dastardly communist, Braun Breaker, spears the soul of the country right out of Hulk Hogan as he hits his head on the apron and Braun tells him that Hulkamania will never prevail over communism and he lays there face down, ass up, kind of like the bitch he is and Braun's in the ring and the referee says, that's it, no more, you evil commie bastard. You've killed Hulkamania and all these little Hulk Hulkamaniac dreams. How dare you? For those of you keeping score at home, that's six. That doesn't work for me, brothers. During the seven minutes it took me to go through the first match on the card. Let's move on, shall we? Lesson we forget, this was an intercontinental title match. So with Ilya Droganov being out of the picture, Braun Breaker now goes on to SummerSlam to fight the homeless commie, Sami Zayn. All right, so after that, we go backstage with the Judgment Day. Finn gets Dom to go after Jey Uso again against the advice of Mommy, who chastises Dom for his social media interactions with Liv, saying she's watching. Also, we go over to Tazawa, Xavier Woods, and Otis. 
with Maxine. They're celebrating Tozawa's birthday. Uh, and they're not showing enough Maxine. So you know what that means. <laughs> Great Nikki Cross video package for the Wyatt Six here, saying how the Wyatt Six, you know, it saved her. And Nikki had been through a lot of character transformations. So this is kind of, it is, it's her salvation for personally and professionally. Punk's in the ring, he puts over the city of Green Bay, and he is medically cleared to go. Drew McIntyre makes his way down as these two are at each other's throats. General Manager Adam Pearce says, you two cannot touch each other until SummerSlam. I seem to have a referee problem, and here's the solution, and it is Seth Fruit Booty Rollins with I don't know what kind of duvet he's wearing, but you know what that means, folks. <laughs> ha! Gay! Next up, we have a Judgment Day segment backstage. They are looking for Jay Uso, and the entire Judgment Day splits up, and that's when uh, Dom runs into Liv, and he resists her. Finn shows up, she leaves. Liv has done a great job with this angle, as has Dom, and Rhea has been superb in her return. And we go over to Sami Zayn and fuck this guy. Uh, the Judgment Day, we go over there and they're beating on Jey Uso and Sami Zayn runs in, makes a save, sets up for a tag match later on. Uh, Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain versus Akira Tozawa. Jesus Christ. Doesn't work for me, brother. So the Alpha Academy is in the ring. Gable puts them down, and Otis in particular. Chad offers his old mates their spots back with the Creed brothers in him, as he is obviously using them to shield him from the Wyatts. And remember, the Creeds beat Bo Dallas down last week. Otis responds with a no, and we get some good mic work from Otis here. The Creed's beat down on Tazawa, Maxine, she gets out. Otis drops them. Three on one's too much for Otis, but then... The lights drop, the music, the smoke hit, and four of the Wyatts are on the ramp, but not Uncle Howdy. Gable turns around, Uncle Howdy says, there you are. Hits him with the sister Abigail, and we cut out, and damn do I stop. Still love this angle, love the presentation. Everything about it is just money right now. And Chad Gable's being a big part of that. He's selling the shit out of it. Bronson Reed versus Pia. Jesus Christ, Pete Dunn looks like a twink. He weighs 205 pounds, Reed's 330. Fuck this booking already. This is as bad as the uh, breaker match earlier. There's only one thing I can say about this utter shite. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. That ain't gonna work for me, brother! So Rhea! Rhea immediately calls out Liv, whose music hits, and she's in the crowd, and she says she's got feelings for Dom. They are mutual. She tells Rhea... Go for girls that look like me. Rhea, incensed by this, she's gonna go handle business. Dom says no. She pushes him out of the way. They get into it, and it comes down to Liv telling Dom she wants to hear three little words. Dom finally gets his chance to respond to this vixen. I hate you, Liv. Are you stupid? Are you deaf? Liv is obviously distraught. Mommy is not. She is extremely happy, proceeds to whisper some sweet nothings in her paramour's ear, and he looks extremely happy. Then, of course, she does what we all want her to do. She licks the side of his face, gives him a big kiss, plants some of that black lipstick on his cheek, and they walk away somewhere. Buddy Matthews, right now, is saying... Doesn't work for me, brother. Here we go, let's sum up the rest of the show. The uh, main event, Sami Zayn and Jey Uso versus the Judgment Day Tag Team Champions, Finn Balor, JD McDonough with Dirty Dom and Carlito. And I think Maggle Cole 
yeeted himself during the Yeet Fest during Zayn and Uso's entrance. But the Judgment Day and the goofballs go back and forth. Numbers game comes into play as it's four on two like an Axel Braun flick at a couple points. Uso throws dog shit punches. And so <laughs> we get an overbooked finish. Dumb and Dumber go over. And the tag champions look like morons. But luckily, uh, Braun Breaker spears the homeless fucking commie trash. And that's how we go off the air. Uh, but there's more. Lyra Valkyria had faced Sonya Deville. And I don't care. And then Zelina Vega got to beat Zoe Stark. Jesus fucking Christ. And that doesn't work for me, brother. That was Raw this week, folks. Overall, not a terrible show. I mean, you had strong points in the program. You started out great with Gunther and Damian Priest. The match, the, f the first match went to shit. Punk and McIntyre and Seth freaking Rollins. Great promo spot. The Wyatts, the Creed Brothers, Gable. Great spot. You've got great spot. Your matches were pretty lackluster, though. I'm not going to lie. They were pretty lackluster. So that's it, folks. That's all I got. I hope you've been enjoying the content. Be sure to tune in tonight. Tuesday Night Terror Vision. We've also got memberships available, $2.99, $4.99 on YouTube, $2 on Patreon. If not, just subscribe. It's free. It always will be. I'm Etep from Wrestling With Horror. You guys have been awesome. I will see you again very soon. Remember, it is always better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs>